Good morning and a warm welcome to A View from the House, our parliamentary news program that keeps you up to speed with news and views from the two Houses of Parliament. My name is Lukanya Khalada. Now in our program today, the President of the Republic of Namibia, Hifike Punye Pohamba, calls for closer economic ties with South Africa. We've got news from the Northern Cape and the Northwest Province. And then later in our program, Higher Education and Training Minister Bladen Zimande gets more powers to intervene in dysfunctional universities. But first, the President of the Republic of Namibia, Hifike Punye Pohamba, has called for a closer economic ties with South Africa. The two countries signed three cooperation agreements before his address to the National Assembly yesterday. Now, in his address, President Pohamba recalled the history shared by South Africans and Namibians. He said many citizens of both Namibia and South Africa, including former presidents Nelson Mandela and Adimba Toivoya Toivo, served long prison sentences on Robben Island. He said both countries are now free and working together to build a common future. He said the two parliaments should continue to cooperate and share experiences with a view to enacting laws that address the social and economic challenges facing the people. Honorable Speaker, with regard to bilateral cooperation between our two countries, good progress has been made over the years. We must continue. We must continue to build on the existing momentum with the emphasis on increased cooperation in the areas of trade, capacity building, energy, infrastructure development, environmental conservation, and sustainable socioeconomic development. The mechanism that our country has put in place to enhance bilateral cooperation have made it possible for us to make progress in several areas. For example, the Heads of State Economic Bilateral Meeting has provided a platform for the discussions on issues of common interest at the highest level. Today, we have taken another important step to further strengthen our relations by signing the agreement on the establishment of binational commission, which will serve as a crucial mechanism for the promotion and the strengthening of economic, diplomatic, cultural, education, scientific, and technical cooperation between our two countries. I have no doubt that this is the correct course of action that we have taken as good neighbors. President Pohamba said the two countries are actively involved in promoting regional integration within the frameworks of the Southern African Customs Union as well as the Southern African Development Community. He said the Southern African Customs Union has become a working model for enhancing deeper regional economic integration in the SADC region and elsewhere on the African continent. The ultimate aim is to move speedily towards continental economic integration in line with the Abuja Treaty and the other relevant policy pronouncements of the Organization of African Unity and its successor, the African Union. Honorable Speaker, we recognize that the task of developing our countries our region and our continent has not been easy. However, we must remain steadfast in our resolve that we can overcome the challenges ahead. We must further strengthen unity and work together to harness the vast human and natural resources on our continent for the benefit of 
all our people. In this regard, we must commit ourselves to do all that is necessary to give hope to all our people on our continent, especially the women and children who endure suffering as a result of war, hunger, diseases, and poverty through no fault of their own. President Pohamba said both South Africa and Namibia are committed to multilateralism and the maintenance of international peace and security. He also called for a speedy reform of the United Nations and specifically the UN Security Council. It is in this context that all efforts must continue to be done to resolve conflict situations in African countries such as Somalia, the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mali, Guinea-Bissau, and the other flash points on the continent. Unconstitutional changes of government in Africa must be denounced and rejected. Honorable Speaker, Namibia continues to call for the speedy reform of the United Nations system, especially the Security Council, in order to make it more representative and democratic, as it is now. As it is now, it's neither representative nor democratic. He congratulated South Africans for honoring former President Nelson Mandela with the launch of the new banknotes bearing his portrait in recognition of his outstanding service to South Africa. Comrade Nelson Mandela has been named after many institutions including a university, I'm told. But I think the portrait of Comrade Mandela on the banknotes is going to be more popular. The institutions after which he is named do not move. But the banknotes, they move. The banknotes move. Every citizen of this country, including my country, where the rent is a, is a legal tender, people will know who is Mandela better than anything else. President Pohamba, a former liberation fighter and founding member of Southwest African People's Organization, SWAPO, ended his address on a rather emotional note. Today, when I sat in the front of where the reception was made for me, they did not see me, but I was shedding tears. I was shedding tears because I never thought in my life I will be able to stand there in a free South Africa. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story, a short story. I am one of the founder members of SWAPO. I went, <coughs> I went in exile for the first time in 1961. As we continued the fighting, 
I never thought, and I did not believe that I will be in independent Namibia. I never thought about it. I thought the children of my children were the ones who were going to get independence or to be in independent Namibia. Because I looked at South Africa, a very strong establishment with the war machines, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't, thought, I didn't think of it. So today, when I was standing there, and today addressing the South African National Assembly, <laughs> it is something for me. Small-scale farmers attending the NCOP accused the Northern Cape provincial government of failing to create jobs. Well, that's our story after the break. Please stay with us.